ladies and gentlemen, we are here. This is a big day here at Real Deal Talk. Um, this guy's an actual legend um, in many, many ways, in many areas. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Harvey Castellano in the house tonight. Harvey, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, sir. So Castellano, mm -hmm. that's, like a, that's like an East Coast mob name. I am very aware of that. Well, I'm born and raised in New York. Okay. From Queens, New York, but I don't have any mob connections. But your ethnic background, what is your ethnic background? I am Filipino-American. My parents were born and raised in the Philippines. They met in New York and Queens. Okay. And I was born there. And how did the, the name came from the Philippines, Castellano? Is that, an, is that a Filipino name? Yes, it's a Filipino name because it comes from Spain. It's a very common name in Spain. Ah, which also uh, uh, they share with Italy because uh, it is in Italy and yeah. it's in Spain. Yeah. Castellano actually means Spaniard. Huh. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah. And, and it was under uh, the Philippines was under uh, Spanish rule for a very long time. Yeah. So that's why all uh, the majority of Filipinos have uh, uh, Spanish last names. Got it. OK. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Mm hmm. And so Harvey here, folks, is the matchmaker for Epic Fighting Productions, uh, CEO Jason Stewart in the house tonight as well over here. Mm -hmm. um, so you are the matchmaker. How long have you been doing that? Uh, like matching up to, fights? Uh, uh, it, it, it's going to be 10 years. I believe I, I first Ten. started matching in 2015 at Epic 28. Wow. Yeah. And now how long has Epic been around? How many years? Uh, 14? 14. 14 years. Yeah, and How I've been doing it for, for nine. And years. explain what that means, matchmaking. What 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 is your matchmaking job is, entail? Uh, 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 every fight that you see on a fight card, yeah. uh, there's somebody who goes, you know what, that person should fight that person. Right. Get the contract together, make sure that everything is in order, uh, medicals and everything to make that happen. Yep. And and ba basically, I, I, I just put it together on paper. Uh, um, but but all the, the the fights originate from um, what I think should happen. Yeah, or who I feel should match up against each other. Yeah. And so, how did you get into this? Because that's such a unique forte. Uh, well, I moved to California in in two thousand and seven to get into the foreclosure market in real estate, huh. and uh, it w it was working at my brother in law's um, um, real estate firm. And at a networking event, I met uh, Jason Stewart. Yeah. Uh, he, I'll never forget it. He presented me with two business cards, one real estate, <laughs> one Keller Williams, yeah. and one epic fighting. And he goes, like, you know, like a magician, pick a card, any card. Yeah. You know, like that. And then he goes, you know, he was like, I also own a, a mixed martial arts company. Do you like mixed martial arts? Do you want to come and see the fight? And then uh, uh, my brother-in-law and I went to an epic fight. And it changed my life because I never saw it like up close and yeah, live like yeah. that. And that was Epic Seven. No way. Yeah. So you had never seen a fight in not person. live. Not, not live. live. Right. You've watched it on TV, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but uh, uh, Jason extended uh, us VIP seats, and we were right up close. And and I saw uh, ring card girls. I saw uh, uh, luxury cars. Uh, yeah. I saw people getting choked out. I heard the gurgling from people getting choked out. If, if somebody got knocked out, I saw their eyes roll to the back of the you know back of the head. Yeah. Uh, and it was something I never saw before. And and prior to that, I actually didn't like MMA. Like yeah. when I lived in Queens, right? I I didn't like MMA. Why not? I thought it was not very masculine. Right. Not masculine. Yeah, I don't like. I, I didn't like seeing two guys, you know, rolling on the oh. floor. That that part. Yeah. Like I could dig with the striking, you know, punching, kicking, or whatever. But I yeah. thought that, you know, like, I didn't understand the sport. Right. And when, when I saw grappling, I thought, ah, it's not for me. I'm, yeah. Who wants to watch that? Yeah, roll two guys rolling around. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and my, my my friend in New York always reminds me of that. That that, that was my attitude when yeah. I lived in Queens, because you know, like guys' night when we all watch TV and order pizza and whatever. Um, they would bring DVDs of UFC fights. Yeah. And everybody would be watching it, and I'd turn around, and I'd be on the computer, like, looking up baseball scores and stats and yeah. stuff. You had nothing to do with it. Right, nothing to do with so it. So how old are you? I am in my 50s. 50s. So yeah. you were around when Tyson was fighting. Yeah. You guys get together for that. Tyson fights. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 
<laughs> right. I remember that all, when, when all two when minutes of the, it. Yeah, the ninety second fight. Yeah, yeah uh, I was at a uh, a, a pay per view party where my friend had his mother like cook, had all this food. We're all watching, getting ready, and a minute and a half it's yeah, over. Done. Yeah, yeah, we had nothing to do the rest of the night. Yeah, except yeah. drink and eat. Right. Right. Yeah. The funny thing is that at that time I was so young I didn't even drink. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Hard dude. to believe after you just saw what I did, right? Yeah, the shot of uh, Don Julio over here. <laughs> so we got Harvey all liquored up on the set right now, folks. So he's feeling good. He's feeling, I'm going to be able to pry a lot out of him right now. I wish I, wish I had more time with you. Um, all right, so go back to the match, mate. Okay, so you mm-hmm. loved what you saw that night. Yeah. Uh, guys getting gurgled, ch- choked out. Right. Um, knocked out, blood flying. Right. You really thoroughly enjoyed that. Right. And it was live and it, it was up close. Yeah. It, it, when you heard, when uh, uh, you could hear the grunt. Yeah. You could, you could, when, when a punch landed, you could hear the punch. Yeah. You know, and if a punch w- w- was thrown to the gut, yeah. you heard the, mm, yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that yeah. type of stuff, you miss that on TV. Right. You don't get it. Yeah. Unless you were there live. And there's a difference between being in a general admission seat or, 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 or yeah. a seat up above true, or whatever true or being up close yep you know and, and then so what happened from there say jay uh uh how can i be a part of this how did it go no actually um um i was having a real estate meeting we were talking about foreclosure properties i was with uh jason at a starbucks and after you know we we finished talking business i told him oh no you know what you're lacking is a social media guy who's putting this stuff live like right after the fight happened yeah putting it on there maybe taking a picture of the person with their hand raised or whatever and he goes why don't you do it and i thought wait a minute i uh i can go to the fight i don't have to pay the one vip ticket that i always went to his house and purchased yeah and i could watch the fight even closer than my vip seat because it's cage side yeah i have to pay the ticket i'll be like, yeah i'll do it and, yeah. and and I became like the social media person for a couple of shows. And um, fast forward a couple of shows, there was an opening for um, the matchmaker. And I remember somebody who uh, who was going, yeah, yeah, I should do it. And I go, and I and I knew that this person wasn't uh, wasn't going to be able to do it. Yeah. So then I just I, I asked him, I go, let, let me take a shot at it. And, and I did, and and uh, I was just thrown into the fire. I didn't know anything. Yeah, because I was gonna say no paperwork you... or nothing. Uh, I was just thrown into the fire and and learn, figure it out as you go along. You and know? so, how did you ha- possibly have enough knowledge to step in and match fighters? Because you got to do homework. Uh, yes, but I saw the previous matchmaker, and I thought that it's not too difficult to beat what was going on previously. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so then, what, how did you dig in? How did you study? Did you start like looking up fighters? No, but by that time, I have already been watching a lot of amateur fights for Epic Fighting, and I was going to other promotions and shows, watching what was going on over there. Yeah. So um, I was pretty confident that, you know, and I could, I could do this. Yeah. You know, and and it, it took a while for me to get it, and I felt uh, uh, my first one was twenty eight, and I felt in my heart that I got it at 33 at 30 I felt that at, by the time I did 33 I I had the confidence to to look somebody in the eye and go that person should fight that person and yeah. it's gonna be a good freaking match yeah you know and along the way like how many like how many people call off what's the percentage of fighters that call out last minute like or, or like bail out uh okay well uh the the limit on on a, on a fight card 17 and I hit 17, and I think uh, within the last week, maybe four or five fell out. Yeah. But, you know, you, you manage with whatever falls right. apart, and then you put them together. Or if there's a fighter that was waiting and didn't have an, a, a fight yeah. and a specific weight class, well, if a, a fight in that weight class broke up, well, then now you can move that person into that match right. if they want to take that yeah. person on. So you, would, you're, so you, build, you build the card yeah. knowing that you're gonna have a couple of bailouts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now, you, I used to go uh, 20 plus. Gotcha. Right, yeah. and then the fallouts would happen and I would be like, okay, well, that's uh, 21, yeah. 20, 19, 18, you know, and then we would get our 15. 
it, it's really that 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 really happens. Yes. Uh, uh, for one it's reason insane. or the other, because of injury. Yeah. Uh, uh, a lot of times, they're. I mean, this is this is a really serious sport. Oh yeah. And it's rough. They get hurt, and it's you have to prepare for that. You have to accept it. You can't be mad at it. Right. Um, you know, but and you just have to be prepared for. Uh, for you know, for for whatever happens, it, and 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 I've been through a lot of uh, uh, situations where I had to figure it out. Yeah. So I think that I'm a, a seasoned vet in dealing with with what happens. You know, like and, like in my first fight cards, I was, you know, scared because yeah. I didn't know. I learned on the job. Yeah. You there, there's on the no fly. epic fighting training manual for matchmaking that Jason Stewart had a HR department draw up. You know, nobody from HR gave me a handbook that says, Harvey, you have to follow this, read pages one through 50. Yeah. You know, you no, just, that didn't happen. Unbelievable, man. This it's is so, yeah. It, it's fascinating to me that, yeah. like, and so you guys have fights, what, every 90 days? Every, every quarter. Every quarter. So yeah. once a quarter. Right. And then how long does it take you to match up a fight? Like, like you got another one coming up. So right now we got one in May, June, July, August. You got probably got another one in September. When's the next one after that? Right. I Epic believe 58. August, August, right? Yeah, it's August. So are you already scouting for that August? I already card? have um, matches signed for August. You already signed for August. Yeah. And then I have maybe another seven who want to be on the August card. So people are, they know who you are. Yeah. You're pretty well known now in the, in the amateur fighting arena. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. So you already have the, that pretty that card pretty much set already. No, you mean August? For, yeah. No, it's not set. I mean, it, I mean, it's only. But I mean, I, I'm, I've started on gotcha. it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, and so this next card, fifty-seven, right? Epic fifty-seven, May twenty-fourth. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, talk to me about the matchups. What are you thinking as far as uh, how good are these matchups? Did you just have you outdone yourself? No, it's going to be freaking great. And, and talk to me about the... Uh, the uh... Well, I, be, I, I have a great uh, banger <coughs> for the main event. Oh, yeah. You know, I have uh, Lee versus Bull. And you know all oh, about yeah. that one. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. my co-main event, you just finished interviewing I, both of them. The right. female match. That's a beautiful one, you know? man. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's all about um, um, getting something that's like a headliner and yeah. filling it in with other great fights leading up to yeah. it. It's kind of like a, a, um, um, a play where you, if somebody watched fight number one to the main event, there's a story and, and it, there's kind of a yeah. flow to it. Right. You know, like uh, if you compare to the, like the first match that happens to like the last five, the skill set is going to be completely different because yeah. you're going to be seeing debuts as opposed to seasoned veterans right. who are on the verge possibly of being pro. Right. You know. And do you set up a card like that? Like the ones that more the, the more of the kind of the inexperienced guys, they'll start the card and then you you ramp it up as the card right. goes on, like the night. Yes, they get better and better. Yes, I mean on paper. Yes, because you never know. You sometimes you have some of these early fights that surprise you that are just oh, freaking for not bangers, like you said. Right, and 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 when you have a debut versus a debut. Uh, uh, yeah, you can get their training background and stuff, yeah. but you don't know what are they going to bring to it. Like I've seen some fighters who they just both go at it and it's incredible. Or you see a debut that he's never been hit that hard. And yeah. in his debut, it's like, bam, it's a wake up call and you see them fold. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's what uh, you want to be tested before you even think about you know what? I want to be in the UFC. Well, there's there's steps to it. Yeah, you totally. Know? And do you think you ever, do you think you'll ever like match make for the UFC or anybody like any pros or anything? Like I that? already have fighters who have gone through their first fight to uh, uh, California Championship. Yeah. To regional, and they're in the UFC. Nice. Like um, my best female ever won the Ultimate Fighter. Who who's that? Uh, Juliana Miller. Okay. Yeah, Fantastic. and 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 she was gonna she was on my <coughs> supposed to be on my first fight card, but her fight fell out, and she did a grappling match with uh, Jason's uh, daughter. Oh really? Card. Yeah. No way. Yeah. How old your daughter? Twenty four. Mm -hmm. Wow, no kidding. Yeah. All right, so talk to me about your motivation. My motivation. What drives is, you? Uh, what, why do you do what you do? Is because I love the sport. And um, I get a real thrill of putting it together and seeing what happens um, in the cage. And I take real pride in them making it to the highest level in the sport because I feel like I'm very instrumental in, in 
getting them there. Yeah. You know. And so these yeah. people's lives, right. careers, right. are ultimately in your hands. Uh, yeah. In well, essence, I mean, right? Because you're I'm, setting I'm them up. Oh, true. But, I mean, the coach is the one that makes of course. them that. Yeah. But I provide them with the opportunity right. in the cage to take them. And um, I, I'll, I'll give you another example. Uh, Juliana Miller, she uh, one time told me that, you know, um, I'm considering a, a commentating. And I was thinking, you know what? Let me uh, guide her with her, her, her commentating now. Yeah. Because if and when she makes it to the UFC, and I'm thinking maybe, you know, when she retires or whatever, then she has something to do after that. Yeah. Maybe a commentating career, right? And I don't want her commentating, uh, uh, amateur cam commentating to yeah. be later if right. I can do it now. Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, she was uh, a, a commentator or she still is a commentator for us. But now other uh, promotions are paying her to fly all around the country and commentate for them based on the work that she did at Epic Fighting, where she got her feet wet in commentating. And know? so for commentating, I was watching that the, the last fight I went to. Mm -hmm. You have to have extensive knowledge in fighting, right? That's the best commentators, would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have uh, it, it. It helps when you are a um, um, a former fighter. Yeah, um, yeah. It yeah, does totally. Right? And that's why I have. Um, they're always my former fighters. Yeah, you know because I have a platform to put them on and prepare them for a career if they decide after their fighting career that they want to do something else. Love it. Okay, yeah. so keep. How long do you see yourself? Like, what's the end goal for for Harvey Castellano? Uh, uh, the creator freedom that I do at Camo with Epic Fighting. I'd love to do that on a on a pro card where I have a say in match number one to match number fifteen, but pro where yeah. everybody's getting paid and yeah. it's on UFC Fight Pass or it's on pay per view or it's on uh, 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 Fox or it's on you know FS1, ESPN. That to me would be. Yeah, to do this. Yeah, but on that platform, yeah. yeah, that's your goal. Yeah, but you'll still always be able to. Of course, because th this is my um, this is my farm. Yeah, this is my minor leagues to the UFC. Yeah, and and I, I and I have the best platform in California for it, which is Epic Fighting. Yeah, how much do you owe Jason for that? As far as the, the opportunity of Epic Fighting. Oh, all of it. All of it. Yeah, yes. because because he doesn't uh, micromanage me at all for. Uh, <laughs> for uh, coming up with the fights. At he, all. he suggests he'll send me fighters and like, oh, find a match for this one. I, I spoke to them. Uh, Harvey, I, I, was, uh, I was in Jamaica and I ran into a guy on the beach. I think he'll be a good fighter. <laughs> he sends me those messages all the time. And seriously, I'm not kidding. Yeah. And I look into it and yeah, that, that, sometimes that's how it happens. No kidding. Yeah. I love it, man. We could go on all, all day with this, bro. Yeah, I know. We can. So the end goal is to get to the pro level. Um, I already do pro. Yeah. I, I've already done But for UFC. Pro. Well, yeah, that, yeah. Would be, that, yeah. That, that would be the ultimate. If it, Yeah, but I mean, in, in the UFC in Las Vegas, it, it's a team of matchmakers that, yeah. that throw it in there. And then Dana White has, has a, a, I guess, the end say in what goes down. Of course. But yeah, th yeah that would be my dream if I, was, if I was part of that team. Yeah. Which is... Uh, 11 minutes from my place in Las Vegas. So I wouldn't, I have, a, I wouldn't have a hard time getting there. And, oh, so where do you live in Vegas right now? Where do you live? I don't even know. Yeah, Las Vegas. You live yeah. in Vegas? Yeah. Oh, so you just fly out here? No, I drive out here. You drive out? Yeah. It, it's not at that point now where I can fly around whenever Jason calls me. It'll be there. Like, yeah. It'll be there soon. Yeah. It'll be there like, like in a So how long are you in town for this time? Uh, Probably taking off tomorrow night. Okay. But, I mean, uh, uh, there might be something that I have to do on Wednesday, yep. so I'll stay one more day. Right. You know? And do you still do the real estate game, too? No. 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 Done. The last, the last one I did was uh, with Jason during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. We, we, did a, we did a real quick flip. Nice. That, oh, that was the last one that I was able oh, to Oh, man. Do. This is great, dude. I was always fascinated by this. So to, to meet someone who's doing this, this, this matchmaking, and I was always wondered how that went and what, what went into it. So, uh, Harvey Castellano, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, uh, scene one, right? Yeah. Interview number one of, I think we're going to be doing something again in the future so we can dig. I want to dig deeper. Yeah, I'm going to dig into your backstory. I'm going to go way back, bro. Okay. Yeah, we're going back. When did you come from the Philippines? No, I, was, I, I came from Queens. You so, know, you were born in the Queens? Yeah, I was born and raised in Queens, New oh, York. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't come, uh, come off the boat. When did the parents come here? Um, the early uh, late 60s late 60s yeah they're still that. alive uh well my my mother is okay yeah 
Oh, you see, I'm already digging. All right, next time we're digging deeper. Uh, dig? Yeah, we're digging I don't, deeper. I don't have anything to hide. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Har- lo- ladies and gentlemen, Harvey Castellano, uh, Don Julio uh, inspired interview <laughs> here. We're just. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. <laughs> hey, I hope I get a sponsorship from Don Julio now. Yeah, because it is. But yeah, I, uh, but I, I feel really relaxed, and yeah, yeah, I could probably go on for two hours yeah. based on um, my, yeah. my my pre your current prep. state of uh, being. I'm good, but I appreciate you I'm giving a- uh, giving me a positive uh, feedback, uh, wanting me to do the interviews again, right off the bat. Yeah, I appreciate uh, that. I knew that you were the guy, right? I, I just saw it and um, J- asked Jason. Yeah, I was like, dude, thank you. That because I'm a, I'm like a perfectionist and I, and um, I mean if you you speak with him without me in the room yeah I'm a real pain in the ass to deal with yeah uh, I got a hot head and 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 I'm a perfectionist so uh, but he is such a calm head that he is that that he can deal with me and yeah. it, it's been like a a great uh, MMA marriage uh, because so uh, if he was like me it, we, this probably wouldn't have worked right but um. He knows how to manage me, and 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 I take uh, I admire how he's able to like keep calm under pressure when yeah. I'd already would have been flipped out. Yeah, no. yeah, and and that shows um, Jason of how many things he handles at one time as an entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, putting out fires, probably ten fires by nine eight, what nine ten a.m. maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just it it was the Carlos Kramer interview that you did. Because when yeah. I when he told me that you were doing it, yes. I went and I saw everything you did, and I saw Carlos, and I was like, oh. oh. So yes. I clicked on it, and Car- Carlos is my boy. Oh yeah, uh, we're like that, and uh, we both kind of got promoted at Epic Twenty Eight because he was a commentator, and our social media we worked side by side, and our matchmaker left, and so did our cage announcer. So we kind of got promoted at the same time, yeah. and. Now he's doing um, cage announcing in Dubai and yeah, flying all yeah, around the world yeah. and, and stuff. So you yeah. saw, do you like you like that podcast I did with him? Oh yeah, I loved it. That that's what made me realize that this is the perfect guy for us. Yeah, you know. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. bro. And Carlos Kramer, uh, Carlos the Roaring Lion Kramer. Mm-hmm. I I he I I was at a charity function, and he introduced the band, and it right. was it was Queen. Yeah. And I had never, and I'm a, I'm a, I love good introductions. Yeah. Like I can't get enough. And dude, he, I, I was, I lost my freaking mind at the way he introduced Queen, this cover band Queen. Mm-hmm. I lost my mind. I'm like this motherfucker. Right. I was like, I went up to him right after. I said, bro, um, I, you, you, we need to connect. Yeah. Uh, that that intro was ridiculous. Yeah. Here's my car. I want you to come on my podcast. And yeah, he has that effect on people. Oh. I've seen people in the audience go, who is that guy? Can we get him to do our show? Yeah. Oh, my God. Because he comes in there and brings, like, the energy that you don't expect. And and he's such a good guy. Yeah. yeah. When I dug in on that one, man, his wife, what she's going right, through, he's right. an amazing right. guy. So, all right, now, that, now that's it. Okay. okay now we're done. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to keep going here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Harvey Castellano. Interview one of many. Uh, Don Julio inspired. Let's go. Real deal talk. Uh, uh. Hey, Harvey, give me a... Uh. Uh. Okay, that was... Can we cut... We're going to have to edit that out. What do you that want was, me to do? I don't know what the hell that was. It sounded like you were in pain or something. Bro. No, like I'm someone, not in any pain You sound like you got one right of those... Yeah, he's feeling no pain. I'm not in any pain right now. I didn't say take a shit here, bro. I said, just, I said give me a... Oh man! Anyway, hard. It's been a, been a pleasure, bro. Well, pleasure working you. with you, man. Yes, yeah. and thank you for bringing what you bring to uh, Epic Fighting because uh, I sincerely appreciate. Oh it. man, my pleasure, my pleasure. Let's go. All right.